So I guess now we're actually able to review products without actually having any experience with the product. Crazy. Let's talk about this. Hey everybody, what is going on? Brandon here, and today I want to do a quick video uh, of a trend that I've noticed, uh, something that I've seen going on uh, in the gaming industry, well, in, in pretty much every industry. Uh, it's not just video games. I've noticed it with movies, I've noticed it with TV shows, uh, and I've noticed it with video games, uh, but it's never really prompted me to make a video and bring it up until today, and that was mostly because of the conversations I had last night, uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, the day before that, um, so I just decided, you know what, let's go ahead and make a video on this because this is something that definitely needs to change. It's not good for this, it's not good for any industry, but it definitely is not good for this industry. And since I, you know, work in this industry, I kind of want things to go as smoothly and be as good as possible. So with that being said, let's get started on this topic. And Brandon, what are you talking about, you may be asking? Well, with that, I pose another question to my viewers before I go in further and explaining what this video is actually about and why I'm aggravated with it. And that is, would you buy a product if the only review you had to go off of was by somebody that never even tried the product. They just heard something and they just copied and pasted and repeated it to you. Uh, for most of you, I would imagine the answer is no. It's pretty common sense. Uh, if somebody has not tried a product, they really have no opinion on the product, at least as far as how that product functions, if it works or not. Uh, and that seems to be what's going on um, here. And what I've noticed the last couple days is gaming journalists not actually playing a game and doing reviews on it and just saying, well, I heard this and I heard this and this person said this, so I'm going to make my review on the game. And as you've noticed, I'm sure on this channel, I don't review games if I don't have first-hand experience with them. And that's for a, a very important reason. I mean, you don't see people go and review food if they haven't tried it. Uh, you don't do that. Uh, when it comes to a product, you need to actually have a hands-on impression with it. Then you make your own informed opinion on it. Now, if you try the product and it sucks and you don't like it and you want to make a, a video or review on it and say, hey, I tried this and I didn't like it, this is what I didn't like about it, that's fine. Then you're forming your own opinion. But what's happening now, and I've noticed it going on with TV, uh, with movies, and now with video games, is that uh, there is a hate train or a love train, depending on which way it wants to go, um, with products and usually people will jump on that bandwagon especially youtubers uh, just to get clicks and just to get views they will jump on that bandwagon uh, they won't even make their own informed opinion and then they just spread that word and a lot of these youtubers with hundreds of thousands of subscribers that have a lot of following are spreading that message to them and then they are reciprocating that and then they are spreading that and then nobody has their own opinion on anything like I just said a little bit ago, and like I've said in, in videos in the past, I do not watch other people's reviews on something before I make my own opinion on it. I don't not play a game and make a review on a game if I've never played it before. Uh, and one of the biggest arguments I've heard uh, defending uh, the person I'm talking about who did this uh, was, well, you didn't need to be in World War II to know that it was bad. The, this isn't World War II. These are games. These are products. Um, I wouldn't go online and bash a restaurant that I've never tried, saying it's the worst restaurant that's ever existed. Their food is awful. Have you tried it? Well, no, I've not actually been. Uh, but I heard from Sam, who heard it from his cousin, who heard it from this. And what ends up happening is it's a game of telephone. You're getting so much negativity or positivity going towards something uh, that has nothing to do with actually the product itself as so much it does one person's opinion being spread to hundreds of thousands of people and it becoming theirs. And that's dangerous. That's not a good way to go about it with anything, whether it's whether it be games, whether it be movies, whether it be politics. Um, you need to have your own opinion on something. You need to make your own opinion. You need, you need to be individuals. You can't just listen to what everybody says and take it to heart. Uh, and the, the reason that is is because, you know, that's that's not a good mentality to have, uh, especially as a society. If you don't have people that have their own opinions and thoughts, uh, Lord knows where we would be today. Uh, when it comes to technology, when it comes to our, our politicians in office, uh, but I'm not even going to get started in that. But you need to be your own individuals, and having this hive mind mentality where you copy and paste what one person says, and that person, and then your followers listen to that, then they repeat it to their followers, and, and then they repeat it to theirs, and they repeat it to theirs, and then everybody's thinking this one thing, and hardly anybody has any actual thought of their own about the actual product and that that can hurt a lot of things that can hurt 
uh, games, that can hurt movies, that can hurt TV shows. We've seen it time and time again. And the biggest reason that I decided to, uh, to make this video and what caused all this and caused this discussion uh, was over the, the game that I played a couple days ago and I've been playing it still and I haven't done a review on it yet but I did a video about the early access backlash on it um, and that was Atlas. And the big thing going on there is a lot of game journalists aren't even actually playing the game where they played it on day two, they recorded there, they didn't keep playing it, uh, they made reviews bashing on it, and then you got other journalists who are just copying and pasting what they said for views, uh, making another video that'll get 100,000 views uh, bashing on this game. And then when you ask them, have you played it yourself? Have you tried it today? Have you, did you try it yesterday? Uh, they all say no. And that's that to me is actually getting really aggravating. Now, I haven't done... A review on Atlas like I said in my video about the early access backlash I am actually planning on doing a review on that uh, a hands-on review once I've got a lot more time into it because it is a grindy survival game there's a lot going on and it is an early access literally every day uh, we're getting server and bug fixes in that game so what it was on day two is miles away from what it is today so it's still evolving it's only eight days old now today um, so I'm waiting to do the review on it. Now, I think most of you will remember uh, when I did my review on DayZ, that game had been in early access for five years before I touched it, before I did any kind of re review on it. And that was a $40 game. This is a $20 game. Uh, and I had over 10,000 people rip my ass because the game was in early access. I shouldn't be reviewing it. It was five years later. Um, so eight days out and nobody is saying, hey, guys, maybe you should... Uh, cut this game a little bit of slack is it's kind of uh, hypocritical I guess I should say uh, but another reason that, that I bring that up is uh, a lot of people that are against the Atlas game and this doesn't necessarily just pertain to Atlas this has a much larger scope at the end of things um, saying they don't support it because it's early access we shouldn't support this kind of stuff the only way this is gonna stop uh, and developers will stop doing this is if we uh, we band together and we just stop buying early access but almost every single one of the people saying this has played a game that only exists today because of the paid early access. Uh, Fortnite, paid early access. Dauntless, paid early access. PUBG, paid early access. H1Z1, Subnautica, all paid early access. There are We Happy Few, paid early access. There are a ton of games that only exist today because of paid early access. Is it a model that kind of sucks? Uh, sometimes, yeah, you can get uh, hurt by it. You, I've seen it happen time and time again. Developers take the money and run or they never finish the game and you're stuck with a broken game or it's a multiplayer game They shut the servers down and you're stuck with nothing uh, and with Steam's refund policy You're pretty much screwed. I've seen it happen. You can get burnt that way. It is kind of a crappy thing uh, But with smaller teams and smaller studios that you know need to pay their developers and They need to I mean nobody works for free uh, Everybody's saying we want our product then we'll pay you um, that works in some instances, and I don't know the financial situation behind Grape Shot Games, the studio that's making Atlas, so I can't really comment on that. Uh, but with a lot of games, you they need to pay their developers, they need to keep server costs paid, they need to be able to pay everybody. Everybody has lives, just like you have lives. This is their job, uh, and if everybody worked in a situation where, oh, well, you're not getting paid until you've done work for about a year or until the product is done... Uh, Auto laborers wouldn't get paid. Fast food employees wouldn't get paid until the end of their shift. I mean, let's. It needs to be. Uh, people need to keep in mind these are people. They have jobs, and they might not have the money to work on this for the next two years. And this could help them uh, fuel development on that. So, but yeah. So some of these developers, you know, they need this money in order to be able to finish the game and also, you know, keep their family fed, keep their lights on at home. Uh, you can't just look at this as these aren't people that they owe you a product before. They deserve to be paid. Sometimes that's the situation. Sometimes they can be paid while they're making your product and it doesn't take money from the consumer. Uh, but in some instances, there's a lot of games that would never exist if it weren't for things like this. Uh, so it's one thing to, to say you're against early access. It's a complete other thing to, to say uh, you're against early access. We need to make it stop when you're enjoying products that were only made because of early access or made possible because of early access. Um, have I been burnt by early access games? Yes, I have. Uh, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you guys, oh, there's no issue with paying into a game early. I mean, it can, you can get burnt. I mean, we've seen it happen before. I've talked about it on this channel before, and it does happen. Um, but going off a little bit off topic, it, it, there's a difference between trying something, saying you don't like it, 
and saying I'm not going to support it, refunding it, or saying I don't support this game and not paying for it. It's a complete other thing to say, okay, well, Johnny said this, so I'm going to repeat this on my channel, uh, even though what Johnny said was 100% false. Like uh, with another thing with, this, with the Atlas game, oh, it's an ARC DLC uh, because somebody found an ARC menu in Atlas on like day one or day two. They found an ARC menu uh, in the coding. And guys, it, it, companies do this all the time. Uh, guess what? Elder Scrolls, uh, Skyrim, and Fallout 4 pretty much the same same menu uh, they they re companies reuse code that they own all the time especially for something simple like a menu uh, it's not really that far-fetched when they're built they straight up said they were building off the foundation of arc that they would just reuse the code from the menu it's that's not far-fetched it doesn't really say oh well that's that's an arc DLC that's not what's going on here uh, other people saying um, the trailer was a lie guys seriously the trailer was a lie. How, uh, that, what, what product? Please somebody link me one trailer for a video game, a movie, a TV show that don't make, make whatever it is look like the greatest thing ever and then it ends up being kind of not nearly as cool. I mean that's the purpose of a trailer, that's the purpose of marketing. Um, and people saying downgraded graphics. Honestly I've seen uh, Atlas at 4K and it looks pretty damn good. Now I can't run it at 4K, I can only run it at 1080p, uh, but it looks pretty awesome, especially on all the highest settings, uh, so saying they downgraded the graphics, and there's been other games that people have threw fits about the trailers and the downgraded graphics. Uh, a couple of them right off the top of my head, The Witcher 3, uh, Spider-Man, those are both games that have been nominated or won awards that are amazing games, but before they released there was always backlash by the trailers were a lie they're downgrading the graphics so please guys let's be grown-ups here it's a trailer it's not meant to be a 100 percent accurate representation of what's in the game it's made to get you hyped about the possibilities of the game just like any other video game trailer movie trailer tv show trailer in the history of mankind since marketing became a thing um at the end of the day if you don't want to try it don't try it uh, but if you're a game journalist, quit copying and pasting what other people are saying. Especially quit spreading that message to thousands of your viewers so that they can just make your opinion their opinion and everybody just has the same opinion and nobody has an original thought in their head. Uh, that's one thing. I, if you watch my channel and you disagree with me, I've got plenty of videos people disagree with me about. Those are all my personal opinions though and I don't sway off those because those are my opinions. And I expect everybody to have their own opinions on things. Uh, but when everybody is jumping on the hate train and nobody has any actual personal um, experience with with a product, that's an issue. Uh, that's not very good for society. That's not very good for anybody. So I don't understand why uh, people will defend that kind of behavior, saying you can review a game or review any kind of product without having a first-hand impression and having your own informed opinion about it. That's wrong. Uh, if, if you think that's okay, then I guess you'll go and buy a car from somebody that flips burgers that has no experience working with a car or he'll go out and you will just never eat at a restaurant because Johnny down the street said the restaurant was terrible I mean you need to have your own opinion that's in the, at the end of the day everybody needs to have their own opinion and if you are a journalist and you're copying and pasting other people's words and maybe you are copying what other people that actually have hands-on experience have said uh, Angry Joe did a review on that same game now his review I actually did uh, kind of liked some of the things he said in it. Now, his thumbnail and his title was a little clickbaity, uh, but in there he even said he was going to come back at a little bit of later date. And even his review was done, I think, on day two of the game. So it's not really like he had footage from today or yesterday when he did the review. Um, he even said he was going to come back at a later date, which that's fine. I, I can respect anybody that says, okay, it's a little broken right now. I don't really like it. Uh, this is broken. This is broken. This is broken. Uh, I'll come back later and see if they fix it since it isn't really access that's okay or even saying the game is crap you don't like the play style again okay that's your own opinion but make your own opinion don't say well joe said it sucks so i think it sucks that's not, that's not very uh being, that's not being an individual at all and that's not game journalism at all either if you're not going to play the game hands-on to make your own opinion to me that's not game journalism that's not you doing a review on a game that's you just repeating what somebody else has said and trying to make money off of it. 
But that's all the time I got for this one, guys. Sorry this video ran a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. I thought this was more of a discussion that I wanted to have with you guys. And uh, I want to know your guys' thoughts on it. Do you think people should review products hands-on before actually you know, doing a review on it publicly? Do you think they should actually test out a product before making their opinion on the product uh, known? Especially when it comes to things like games or movies. Uh, I want to know your guys' thoughts. Leave a comment down below. If you like this video and you want to see more, even though I normally don't do videos like this, please do me a favor and mash that red subscribe button. Uh, also, if you want to know anytime Nathan and I upload videos, please do me a favor and click that bell icon, and I will see you guys next time.